الله 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 ما لنا ما ولن سوى الله الله الحمد لله الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونؤمن به ونتوكل عليه ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له ونشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له ونشهد ان سيدنا ومولانا محمدا عبده ورسوله اما بعد فاعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم أَمَّنْ خَلَقَ السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضَ وَأَنْزَلَ لَكُمْ مِنَ السَّمَاءِ مَاءً فَأَنْبَتْنَا بِهِ حَدَائِقَ ذَاتَ بَهْجَةٍ مَا كَانَ لَكُمْ أَنْ تُنْبِتُوا شَجَرَهَا أَإِلَاهٌ مَعَ اللَّهِ بَلْ هُمْ قَوْمٌ يَعْدِلُونَ وقال تعالى يا أيها الإنسان ما غرك بربك الكريم وفي الحديث ما عبدناك حق عبادتك أو كما قال عليه الصلاة والسلام اللهم صل على سيدنا مولانا محمد وعلى آل سيدنا مولانا محمد وبارك وسلم عبد الرئيس ترباتا أنا ما أبغى نديك سكوم يمكن ستسخير هذا استرفت ورس اللهم صل على سيدنا مولانا محمد وعلى آل سيدنا مولانا محمد وبارك وسلم الحمد لله all praises for Allah سبحانه وتعالى the most gracious the most merciful we thank Allah سبحانه وتعالى for all his gifts and favors that he has bestowed upon us today's topic of discussion is to reflect upon who is Allah سبحانه وتعالى because um, we just we've been blessed with Ramadan and the month of Hajj and these things have come to a close we are ever grateful to our Creator for these moments, uh, the, the most specialist times of our lives, right, to connect with our Creator. And so I was thinking, you know, where do we start off our speeches? Because now it's going to continue till Ramadan. And I said, we, first we should know who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is, that's where everything should start from. Who is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? So in the Quran, in the Ahadith, there's many ways you, you get the introduction. When you connect yourself to the revelation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will uh, explain Himself to you in many different ways. And knowing who Allah SWT is, this is called ma'rifat, recognition. This is actually the purpose of human life. When you read that verse, there's one verse of the Quran. If someone says, what's the purpose of life? You're going to quote, there's one main verse. It says, وَمَا خَلَقْتُ الْجِنَّ وَالْإِنسَ إِلَّا لِيَعْبُدُونَ I didn't create the jinn and the mankind except to worship me. Right, that's the verse. But there's another riwayah, and the Quran has seven riwayahs, different readings of it. There's another reading that says, لِيَعْرِفُونَ I didn't create jinns and human beings except to know me. So, and so these two both meanings are considered. To, and, and by the way, when you worship your Lord properly, you, you end up with knowing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You, you know your creator. So you have to have um, the worship which requires ilm, a proper uh, knowledge, and that knowledge is ma'rifat. And a high level of worship is only going to be done when you know your creator with more ma'rifat. So ma'rifa is something very, very important. It's something that we develop over time through human beings learn it. And the more ma'rifa you have, May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us the ma'rifah, the recognition of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. One of the, uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, yeah, but human beings, we don't know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. One of the reasons why we fall victim to our desires, we, we are not able to obey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is you don't know Him. All it boils down to is what? You don't know Him. That's why you don't, that, that's why you can't worship Him. That's why you can't submit to Him. That's why you can't sacrifice for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the more you know Him, then the more you'll be able to sacrifice. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us this year, make, a, make it a blessed year. It's a year in a way, or such great times have passed us, and we're still in the great month of Hajj. Um, Allah SWT grant us whatever times that we have left. How many Ramadans and Zulhijjahs are we going to see? We don't know. How old is everyone here? Are you 30? If you're 30, you're in the, around there, then well, half is left. If half is finished, you got half time left. If, that's if you're going to make it till 60. So these, these are very important, and ma'rifah is the purpose of your life. So may Allah SWT grant us uh, much of it. So the, the reason a human being can't change his life, he can't be obedient, is because he doesn't have ma'rifah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu says in one verse of the Quran, I'm going to share many ayats with you, many ahadith, and you'll, attra- you'll start to understand this topic a bit more. The recognition of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, okay? May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make it easy, may, may he enable me to say it in a way that's clear, and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala enable all of us to understand it. Ya yu al-insan, another verse, O mankind, 
ما غرك ربك. And this is actually Quran is the is a, it's a holy book, right? Revelation for us. It's actually it's, it addresses it goes humankind, all oh, humankind. There's no book in the world who addresses because it's not a right. Because it's the Creator and He's speaking to mankind. Oh mankind, what has deluded you from your noble Lord, your Kareem Lord, your generous Lord? Kareem means generous. Your Lord is so generous that right? He's given you everything. Who has deluded you? And when people become irreligious, when you go away from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, right? Go the opposite direction. We sh every second we should be getting closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But man, he goes on the wrong tracks, right? Because of the enemies in the world, because of his own weaknesses. So Allah subhanahu wa mentions that here. So there are many, many ayats. Now, either a human being is going to get the recognition of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and draw closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, or he'll be in ghafla, heedless. You won't. You're not. You're going the opposite direction. Then what Allah SWT does to you, He gives you trials and tribulations. To, and that's from His mercy to bring you back on the right track. Sometimes people can't be religious. They can't be humble. And sometimes it's a very life-changing experience for them. And then from that day onwards, they're very humble. They, did, they weren't humble before that. It takes like an accident. It takes like a car accident. It takes like loss of life in order for you to... So, so, so the bells to ring in your head about the... The, the fleeting nature of this world and about the Creator, you start to recognize your Creator. From, that's what's happening to you. You recognize you. You became religious after that. Whatever it is, every time is a good time to go to. As long as you're alive, it's always a good time. But what's the best time? The best time is when you're younger. The best time is when you are in your more, you, more youth, the more energy you have. So give your best time to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the more higher rank you'll have on Yomul Qiyam. Make sense? Every time is a good time to go to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But the best time is when you are more younger. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us tawfiq. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ma yaf'alu Allahu bi'adhabikum. What would Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala do by punishing you? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, because you know, he, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has more rahmah on his creation, more than the creation. The creation doesn't have rahmah. He surpasses our love for his servant. He goes, what would Allah do by punishing you? In shakartum. Only if you could be more grateful. Wa amantum. And bring iman. You have to accept Allah you have to acknowledge Allah you have to be obedient to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is very grateful and he's mashkur, he appreciates. Even the tiny thing that you'll do, it counts, it's not going to go anywhere, it's very appreciative. And even when you're in ghafla, when you're going opposite direction, you're supposed to be going this way, towards Allah, but you're going this way, him bringing you back forcefully through the trials and tribulations is also part of his rahmah. So if no ma'rifah, then they'll be forced. You'll be forced back. This is from his rahmah. We see um, in the world disabilities, tragedies, right? And sometimes we think, oh, this child is sick. Uh, that tragedy happened. So many people died. And our heart goes out to these people, right? But what about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is more merciful. So when you feel the pain and the suffering of someone, a child who's orphaned, um, someone who, right, we, we feel, we'll feel for them. When you make dua, you're like, you're shaking with what has happened before you. Imagine Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala feels it more. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has this, um, you know, he has more rahmah upon us. So it's just, we have to recognize Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through these, um, through, through the ayats. And we have to try to gain some ma'rifah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He's beyond, the, usually human beings, we, our, our shallow understanding of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is that we say, oh, he's the most merciful, most forgiving. That's true. He's the most forgiving, most merciful, but he's much more than all that. Like that's, that's, like, that's like a basic where everybody starts. Like he's the most merciful, most, that's true. He is that as well. Most merciful and most forgiving. But uh, he's much more than that. So when you read the ayat and you connect yourself to the revelation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, your marifat will grow. You have to spend some time out to know who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is. Sit with someone and learn who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is. And then that will make it easier for you to obey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That will be easier for you to curve your false desires. Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa when he was in Taif, everyone knows the event of Taif, when he went to Taif, right? The people mistreated him. Okay? So why, why did he have to go through that episode? When he was asked, what was your most worst time? To Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa was asked. He said Taif. I had a very hard time at Taif. This, but he still had rahmah and said upon them. So even his trial. And if you look at all the Anbiya, look at all the prophets. What are you seeing in all the, what's a common theme in all the stories? The trials and tribulations. 
tri tribulations is part of human, it's part of the human nature. It's the way Allah has created the world. He's created the good and evil. I to test mankind. Okay? And even the bad, it creates the trial, it creates character in a person. It's very important. It's just the way that Allah has made the world. And we have to see it for what it is. The Prophet وسلم, who did he love a lot from his relatives and family members? One of the people he was, he was very close to was his uncle. What happened to his uncle in the battlefield? Chopped into pieces. So the, his most beloved, his uncle. The Prophet وسلم, being the most beloved of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But he went through trials. <coughs> when Ibrahim Nuh salam, when he became fed up with his people, so because they because he been doing da'wah to them for so long, years and years, he ended up saying, Rabbi la tadar al ard min al-kafirin. Oh Allah, don't leave on this earth any human, any kafir. <coughs> Destroy them all. So this dua he made dua against. You know, Anbiya are usually having so much mercy on their community, trying their best to bring them onto the path. But here he got fed up that has been like years, hundreds of years have passed. Generations are coming. Each generation will teach the generation prior, don't listen to the Prophet. You know, because Prophet Nuh he he'd passed. You get it? Each generation was coming, they were giving like in their writing, um, you know, like, um, you know, farewell advice. Don't listen to the Anbiya. Don't listen to the Anbiya. They're generationally passing it on. So he was done with them. Just now, just to teach Nuh a lesson about what that, what that means, Allah SWT told Nuh build small structures, build like small little uh, things, um, and then break it. He asked them to, from dirt, um, create certain little objects, and then he made them, and then Allah SWT break them. But it took him a long time to make them. So Nuh was hesitant, why, why should I break them? It took me a long time to make them. You first asked me to make them, now you're asking me to break them. Why are you asking me? He said, so see how you don't feel like breaking something that took you so long to build. These are my creation. You said, you don't want, you're, you're so hesitant. This is my creation. So Allah Subhanahu wa rahma towards us is more than our human possible, our, our mercy towards one another. We have to recognize who Allah Subhanahu wa ta'ala is. That's the purpose of our life. May Allah Subhanahu wa ta'ala give us tawfiq. And how will it be done? Through His revelation. Through His revelation, your, your ma'rifah will grow. And then when this ma'rifah grows, your, your worships will count more. Your worships will, it'll, it'll, the quality of it will go up. And that's the purpose of your life. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Inna fi khalq sama Verily in the creation of the heavens and the earth and the alteration of night and day. There are signs for people of intellect. Everything is a sign of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The power, the, mag the, the grandeur and the majesty of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Everything is a sign. <laughs> if, you, if you think deeply about certain matters around you, your own, your own body, from your own body to all the creation, to the earth, Allah subhanahu wa says in one place in the Quran, see now if you read these ayats, your ma'rifat will grow. Each, each ayat that I'm sharing with you randomly from different places, your ma'rifat will grow. So imagine, and these are just some. Actually, every, that's why every Quranic is called an ayah. Ayah means it's a sign. Every, each ayah is a sign. Actually, one, one verse of the Quran is such, it'll be sufficient for our guidance if we understood it correctly. We just don't get to the deep layers of it. But sometimes it doesn't, you know, maybe it just goes over our head. One verse Allah SWT says, وَلَوْ بَسَطَ اللَّهُ الرِّزْقَ لِعِبَادِهِ If Allah SWT was to open up the sustenance for His creation, He could. Could He have just made Allah, all the human beings just billionaires? Just everyone. So that, that we don't have to go to work every day. We just sit home. In San, we can just sit home. Right? It's easy for Allah. كُنْ فَيَكُونْ He will just say, He'll say, be and it will become. But He, but he tells the reasoning. Allah SWT gives us the reasoning. لَبَغَوْ فِي الْأَرْضِ Then you are transgressed. Then you, you would have passed the, the, the purpose of why the earth was created to be tested. Some have to have more wealth. Somebody may have the good looks. Somebody has wealth but no good looks. Someone has both. Right? Someone has this, somebody has ilm. Somebody doesn't have ilm. Somebody has ilm of the dunya. Someone doesn't. Someone has this. Allah SWT has made these differences just to make it a test. And each person is being tested on their own level. But if Allah SWT wanted, He could have opened up the doors of risk. But then, لَبَغَوْ فِي الْأَرْضِ You would have just transgressed. You would have all went on the wrong track. That, that doesn't help you, doesn't help your case. So he gives you money, slowly, slowly. And sometimes when you get money, then you rebel more. When you have more money than you rebel, then you rebel more. All of a sudden, uh, because now you have money. This is Laba Ghofra. So that says, so when he kept money away from you, that was a wisdom. Then he slowly gives you money. So everything with progression. When people get married, and when they have children, then they start having more money. Because now the risk of the people who are attached to you is also connected to you. 
It's like that. So everything comes down with measure. Even everything comes down with measure. Even the snow comes down with measure. Even the rain comes down with measure. Everything is in the control and command. Even a leaf doesn't fall. Just think of that. Except with his ilm and with his command. Now see that you and I won't fathom the everything. No, there's no command to that. A leaf just falls. You don't have to command it. It just falls. No, it doesn't fall. Even that's going with the command of Allah Subhanahu The gravity when it pulls it down, that's also going with that. The command and the knowledge of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. So, we have to up our connection with this with the, our Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. This is the purpose of our life, and so we need to do this, and then Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala will make obedience to Him easier for us. Look at the different occupations. What if everyone was in this world and we all wanted to become dentists? Then who would be the police officer? And who would be the firefighter? Who would be the Imam Sahib? And then who would be the alim dedicated his life to the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? In our hearts, it's different things because the, the whole world has to function. So everybody's been inspired with different works. And that was makes us all this is something from him. He's already done that. Nothing, it's from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The how much you know, because Allah subhanahu wa wants the dunya to function. So he puts this in this person's heart, this in this person's heart. But but it's still not the purpose of your life. Your purpose of your life is still the ubudiyah, the servitude to him and the ma'rifah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. <coughs> like Imam <coughs> Jalaluddin Rumi rahmatullah alayhi, in some of his poems, in his book, one of the books that we're covering in our youth halaqah, <coughs> he mentions that, you know, Allah, like human beings have so many qualities. Somebody might be a dentist, somebody might be a doctor, someone has this quality, someone has a businessman, someone has good with his hands, someone's good with his mind, someone knows math. Someone, there's this, right? The world, the way the world functions. But which one is, which quality is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala looking for on the day of judgment? It's not your mathematical skills. It's not how handy you were. It's not how much muscle you had. Which quality is looking? He's looking for just one quality. It's how much you recognized him. That's it. Just that one is the one that's going to please him. So we have to acknowledge that. And this is not a secret. This actually is, it's a mercy from God that this is not a secret. In the revelation, it's very clear that this is the one we're looking for. Other ones are just extras, extras. But the one we're looking for is how much you recognized us. How much you were able to see with the eye of Basira, deep insight into who Allah SWT is. <clears throat> In one hadith, the Prophet Wasallam explained to the Sahaba Ikram, told them that if you knew what I knew, because Prophet Wasallam he would have you know, more knowledge that you know, he was able to hear the angels he knew about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Imagine how much ilm he had, how much ma'rifat he had, Allah's Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So he told the sahaba ikram that if you knew what I knew, and if you heard what I, what I hear, then you would laugh less and you would cry more. You would laugh less and cry more and your desires would just vanish. Desire for marriage, desire for <coughs> these, you know, these worldly appetites, they would just, they would, they would go. And he said that you would just run to the deserts. The hadith didn't end there. It goes, if you run to the deserts and you would abandon your world and you would just run to the deserts and just obey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for the remainder of your life. If you knew what I knew. But the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, although he had this ma'rifah, he knew that. He's saying that if you knew what I knew, you would just run to the deserts, you'd leave the world. But despite knowing all that, he was still with his family. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, was still with his family. He was still laughing. He was still with his sahaba ikram. He's acting, he's being like the best human being, right? The role model. He was doing everything with balance. So it means that this doesn't take away from that. It's, a, it's just a state of your heart. <coughs> if you have a recognition of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant all of us. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala purify our hearts. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he created death. Khalaq al maut he created death. It says that he created death and life. It says death first. He created death and life. And then when someone passes, how, how long can we mourn, not go to work generally? Is three days? Three days that you, you, you leave your work and you'll, you know, you'll go on slow down. You know, from dunyavi work, you leave things because you're mourning the, the death of your loved one. But after three days, the hukam is now carry on with life. Because when people go from this world, life just moves on. Life is just part of the, the, the process. There's actually, there's, there's a lot to be learned just from that. The fact that you, know, you just mourn only for three days. And then you're commanded to now go back to your normality. You can't keep thinking about that. You have to move on. Everyone's going there. The, everybody's journey is that direction. <laughs> so this, this is just the, the marvels and the wonders how Allah SWT has created in this system.
So the lesson to be learned from all these, the reason I'm sharing all these ayats and ahadith is that we should take some time out for this. We should take time out to know who Allah SWT is. Whenever you take time out for Quran and the revelation of Allah SWT, that's really what you're doing. You're learning the fleeting nature of this world and you're learning who the Creator is. And this is the most important task. The most important task. And the punishment if someone doesn't, that you're going to leave Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. You're not going to take time out for this to know who your Creator is, what the purpose of your life is. Then the punishment is you'll forget yourself. Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala says, if you forget Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala, He'll make you forget yourself. Forget yourself means you won't become a purposeful human being. You'll become a human being in this world, but you're not too beneficial for for anyone, not even for the world, not for not for any. You're not serving because you're not. You've gone away from your purpose. You're disconnected from the purpose of why you're created. So those people who are connected, it's very important to remain connected with the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's like you're alive. Like one hadith says that remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is like you're alive. And a person who doesn't remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is like moat. A person who will stay in non-remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So may Allah subhanahu wa protect us from that, being in a state of ghaflat. These days, beautiful days have you know, finished Ramadan and the month of Hajj, times of Hajj. So this day is still a sacred um, month. And so to do more ibadahs in this month before this year comes to a close. May Allah give us more, many more beautiful years. May Allah give us many more beautiful Ramadans, beautiful Hajj. This time Allah will give us tawfiq to avail this opportunity that we have. A question could arise. <clears throat> like let's just say there's a child who's sick. A child who's sick. But he went through his illness throughout his life. When he shows up on Yawm Al-Qiyamah, when he complained to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that I didn't get to enjoy I was just sick all my life. Will he say that? What's the answer to that question? Will he say that? That person who was sick didn't get to enjoy life. He just remained sick. Then on Yom Al-Qiyamah, will he complain that my life like, like this? No, he will not complain. He will not complain. And the reason he won't complain is because the world is not, a, it's not, a, it's not our destination. The world is not Darul Qarar, the place of... It's just, we're just on a journey here. Real destination is Jannah. He will say, he would be more than happy because he'll go straight to Jannah. Right, because of his illness, it took him away from the worldly pleasures and he connected with his creator and he went straight to, he'll be able to go to Jannah very easily because of that. Does that make sense? So in the hereafter, this world, this world will feel like, like a small moment, like a breakfast time, like a lunch time. Small, it will be irrelevant. You won't even think about it in the Akhirah. Like we really want to discuss it. Not important at all. Let's just move on. So this is the nature of the dunya. When you connect yourself to the revelation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, these realities, you, you internalize them. And this is very, very important. For example, also people die, sudden death. Sudden death. If somebody dies, sudden death, what's the ruling of that? Is that a shaheed? Sudden death. What about if somebody dies in water? Shaheed? Inshallah, shaheed, yes. So sudden deaths, died in water is shaheed. So people like that, what does the hadith say about shaheed? That the shaheed would want to come back in this world and he, he hopes they can get another, another death like that. It's such a beautiful exit way out from this world. So uh, these, these are the realities um, behind these things. Uh, there's one dua, Rabbana la qulubana. Don't deviate our hearts. Don't deviate our hearts. When you don't have recognition of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then these events, you're not able to understand these events. You, live, you lead a purposeless life. You are going away from Allah. So Allah Subhanahu makes actually, when you go away from dhikr, remembering your creator, he makes life hard on you too. Economically, life will get hard on you. Man a'rada an dhikri, whoever turns away from my dhikr, fa'inna lahu ma'ishatan dhanka. Then his livelihood will be restricted. Wa nahshuruhu yawm al-qiyamati a'ma. And then we'll resurrect him on yawm al-qiyamah as a blind person. Qala, he'll say, Rabbi lima hashartani a'ma. My Lord, why did you raise me blind? Wa kuntu basira. I used to see. Like that our ayats came, فَنَسِيتَهَا You forgot them. وَكَذَلِكَ الْيَوْمَ tunsa, And so today we, you, you were forgotten. <laughs> so, remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Even in our khutbah, what's the last sentence I say? Come on, I, I do this every week. Right, we repeat the same ayats. The reason we repeat the same ayats in our khutbah, those are the, these are the most specialist ayat. They're specially selected. What's the last one that I say? Oh, come on. You know it, you're being humble. Huh? What is it? What's the last thing I say before I end? No, in my khutbah. In the second khutbah, at the end. This is not the Springfield community. It's your community. Wala dhikrullahi ta'ala. Akbar wa tammu wa jallu wa akbar. That the remembrance of Allah is the most greatest thing, the most, the most complete thing, the most majestic thing. 
That, that, so that, that is the reality. That's why it ends with that. It's the most powerful you know, the reality of this world. So the ma'rifah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the, today's, I'll, I'll leave you with just one more, one more had, uh, uh, quote. This is by Ali radiallahu ta'ala. Ali radiallahu ta'ala says, you know when you make a plan for something and it doesn't happen? When you make a niyyah and I want this to happen and then it still doesn't happen. So Ali radiallahu ta'ala will say that when that happened, that's ma'rifah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now I know that the creator is at work. I had planned, full plan, I want something, and it's readily available to me. But Allah SWT doesn't allow me to get that one thing that I really wish to get. That shows me that the one, the, the one person who's in control of everything, that is Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. So ma'rifat, these ayahs, these ahadith, once you connect with them, then your ma'rifat grows, and then your obedience becomes easy. May Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala give us tawfiq to do amal. Wa akhir da'wana, alhamdulillah, rabbil alamin. Subhanallah, wa bihamdi, subhanallah, radhim, nashadu Allah, ilayla, astaghfiruka, wa natubu ilayk.